Hi everyone, my name is Cecil Phillip, developer advocate here at Stripe, and we are on the floor at Sessions 25. And I'm here with Michael Truel, hey. CEO of Cursor, uh, the AI editor that I'm sure a lot of you have all tried out and been playing around with. Now we're just going to have a quick conversation with Michael about some of the cool things that he's been thinking about and some of the things that he's been up to. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Sure. So for me, one of the things I've always been curious about is, you know, I believe every superhero needs to have an origin story. So I'd love to hear what the origin story for Cursor is. Yeah. Cursor came from a place of being really excited about how AI was going to progress starting in 2021. Yeah. And there were a couple of moments that inspired us. One was seeing kind of the first AI products come to be, you know, things like GitHub Copilot. Mm -hmm. um, we were early beta users. Yeah. We were really, really excited about them. Um, and with Copilot, you know, it was really the first AI product we had used that was yeah. actually useful. And then the other exciting thing was when we used Copilot, it was the most useful dev, dev tool that we had used yeah. in a long period of time. And so that kind of made clear to us viscerally that AI was going to be this new set of colors to paint with that was going to be really powerful. Sure. Um, and then it also came from, you know, that was one big moment. Another big moment for us was seeing research coming out in 2021 mm -hmm. about how AI was going to get better, even if we ran out of ideas, if we just scaled up the models and scaled up the data. Yeah. And so kind of around that time, I and my co-founders, we, we started talking about, you know, the future of programming. And it seemed clear to us that, you know, as these models developed, as this technology developed, the act of programming was going to change a lot. Yeah. And um, there was going to be a lot of opportunity there. Did you, did you know that it was going to be as big as it is today? Or was this kind of like a, oh, this looks like a fun idea. Let's kind of try it out and see what happens kind of thing. I definitely didn't know that it was going to happen this fast, that it was going to yeah. grow this fast. And so even when we launched Cursor, or when we first launched our beta, we thought we would be iterating in public with a small group of 100 people for a long, long period of time. Yeah. Um, and for us, it's always been this long journey of, we think we're still at the very start of where programming can go as AI matures. Sure. Um, but that wasn't the case. Kind of from the start, it was off to the races of, there was you know, a really useful product to be built here, yeah. and people recognized that, and people used it and adopted it. Uh, and so it definitely, the kind of adoption side of things has happened faster than we've expected. I still think that on the product side of things, there's so far to go. Got it. So outside of like the exponential growth of the industry in general, are there any other things that like surprised you as you know in the early days as you were building out Cursor? Yeah, I think a, a couple of things surprised us. I think one was um, we are something that's we are kind of a company that's in between an AI lab and a normal software company. Sure. Where I think we and like you know people in lots of different parallel industries um, fit this mold of a company that needs to build a great product, and part of that is also building great models behind that great product. Yeah. And um, so that act of trying to get the model development to work in, under the same roof as the product development is, is a tricky one. And yeah. um, I think when we started, we uh, didn't even think we were going to be doing any model development. That, that was actually a surprise to us. Yeah. And that's been an important lever on the product side of things to make Cursor better for folks. That's interesting. So, you know, as a lot of us are talking about AI, right, it's, it's usually around like productivity. Yeah. Like, how can, how can we become more productive developers and yeah. just people in general? Like, how, how are you looking at productivity today? And like, even in the future of productivity, like, what do yeah. you think, like, you know, editors like Cursor and stuff are going to be able to, you know, help developers and take us into the future? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that we'll just be able to build a lot more stuff sure. a lot faster, um, which is, for, you know, for many people, that's what got them into programming. Yeah. Like, if you look at uh, building stuff on a computer versus maybe working in, uh, in other domains, mm -hmm. uh, one of the amazing things about working on computers is just how fast you can build things, sure. how fast uh, programming is, um, and also how you don't really need permission from anyone to kind of start building things. Yeah. And so I think that that will be kind of taken to the max where, you know, the experience of building things quickly with a small group of people, um, we are really excited to take that to, to much larger companies where you know, the act of active building software really quickly, I think, you know, starts to break down when you have mm. hundreds of people working in many millions of lines of code on mm. long run professional projects over many years. Yeah. And so we're excited to improve the speed there a ton. I'm, I'm kind of curious, as, you know, as, as you've been building out Cursor, have there been any like, surprising um, use cases from your customers that you're like, oh, I never really thought people would have done that with, with the stuff that we built. Like, have you had Definitely. any of those moments? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, kind of across the board, and that is kind of comes hand in hand with the adoption has you know exceeded our wildest expectations in terms yeah. of the speed. And um, Cursor at this point is just used by so many people, yeah. many, many millions, and it's folks from some of the biggest technology companies in the world. 
yeah. um, you know, creating you know things like fantastic GPUs or um, fantastic ride sharing or delivery or financial services products. Um, so some of the largest companies in the world, and then you know all across the board, uh, you know small small companies, startups, um, you know fast growing companies, and then. Um, it's also the cursor user base is very diverse when it comes to like a you know country of origin, where we're used a ton in the U.S. but yeah. also a ton in EU and Asia, and also a ton by independent software developers. Mm -hmm. And so I think that just like the adoption across the board of companies of different scale, companies yeah. of different location, has surprised us a ton. Um, I think you know one thing that's also surprised us too is we are building for professional developers, mm -hmm. and that's our main focus. It's yeah. been interesting to see people kind of also experiment at the, the fringes, you know, people who don't have a background in, yeah. in coding languages or a little bit more of a light background in coding languages. Right. And you know, as an example of that, uh, we have a fantastic you know, uh, founding designer on our team who has built an emulation of uh, uh, the 1984 Mac operating system in the web yeah. that's like almost entirely fully functioning with 12 different apps and that's its awesome. whole own file system and its whole version of its own games and its whole AI code tool within the operating system. Mm -hmm. And he's done that with writing very little code. That's awesome. uh, and so you know, that, the speed at which folks there at the, the fringes have kind of experimented has also surprised us a ton. You know, the, the exciting thing for me is one, being able to just move faster, but it, I feel like it also allows us to solve harder problems. You know what I mean? I think about the amount of time that you know, it would have taken me to set things up, the amount of time that it would yeah. take me to just get going. Yeah. And like using tools like, like cursor and models and different types of things. Yeah. Now I'm like, okay, well I can do some of these things a little bit faster, yeah. or a lot faster in some yeah. cases, but now that means I, I have the capacity to solve harder totally. problems, right? I yes. can focus on some of the things that are a lot more difficult because yes. I have the time to be able to sit down and yes. do that. Yes, you know? yes. Uh, yeah, I, you know, our goal, in many ways, one way to think of our goal is, you know, we want to free up human time to focus on the most important things, yeah. and, you know, not the low entropy, not the toiling parts of, of building software. Mm -hmm. uh, we want it to be that, you know, invention in and digital space is effortless, and it should just be, you know, I think building stuff on computers should be just distilled down to defining how you want the software to work, sure, um, and having control over all those parts and. Um, less around the translation of, hey, here's this thing in your head, you know how you want it to work, to you have to you know, sort of be a human compiler or interpreter for sure, and for spell sure. things out I exactly um, you know, to something that a traditional compiler or interpreter could understand. Gotcha, gotcha. So we're here at Stripe Sessions, right? There's a lot of stuff happening around us. Yep. You know, tons of announcements and you know, features and all kinds of stuff being announced. I'm kind of curious, like, what's the future look like for Cursor? Like, what, is your, what do you think your next year or two looks like for the product? Yeah, of course. So two of the, the biggest features in Cursor are our tab and then our agent. Yeah. So the tab is like a, a helper that's looking over your shoulder, trying to predict the next set of things you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, it predicts the next whole diff around your cursor or the next series of changes you're going to make across multiple files. Sure. Um, and then the agent is you know, a helper that you, you ask to go make a change throughout a code base or you ask it a question about a code base. And each of those, I think, can get fantastically more productive. I think that they're, you know, both are useful, yeah. but definitely there are, there are ways they could be much better. And so I think that some of the ways in which we want them to get better is uh, code base understanding. You yeah. know, as you, know, you build larger and larger, more professional applications, mm -hmm. um, one of the most important things is making sure the AI understands your code. Mm -hmm. And we've made really big strides there in the past couple of years. Sure. Um, in fact, also, you know, one of the people that, uh, you know, one of the teams that works at Cursor is one of the teams behind one of the first million token context window models. Mm -hmm. um, so code base understanding, speed is a big focus of ours. For sure. I think when you're building for real professional developers, um, giving them a really fast iteration loop is incredibly important. Sure. Um, and you know, that's felt all across the software development lifecycle you know, for folks in you know, things like CI or mm -hmm. linting. I think that that's especially, especially important for AI. Yeah. So code base understanding, speed are important to us. And we also you know, want to you know, make new product experiences for things like the agent. Yeah. So you should be able to tell the agent to go think in the background if you want it to think in the background, for sure. move very quickly between the background and the foreground mm -hmm. uh, in working with the agent. Uh, increasingly, Cursor should be able to also run its code mm -hmm. in a safe environment and then yeah. see the output of its work and then react to that too yeah. and kind of loop back and forth on those things. That's so. awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know, I'm really excited for to see some of the things that you and your folks at Cursor do. Um, definitely not free for my job or anything like that, but again, super excited to, to see some of the things that happen here. But I know, you know, we don't have tons of time, so I definitely appreciate you coming and, and hanging out with us. Yeah, Hope you enjoy the rest of your time with Stripe Sessions, and I think you're giving a talk as well, right? Yes, yes. No, just, just came from it, yeah. And how did, how did that go? How was your talk? Uh, it was great, yeah. It was fantastic talking to, to the group at Stripe. I think that we think about, when we think about 
building cursor, like kind of the model customer in our mind is the discerning developer. Yeah. And I think that both, you know, Stripe is an aspirational example we look up to as a company that we think has done that really well. Sure. And also talking to the audience here, there are tons and tons and tons of folks in that category, very discerning. Awesome. And so it got in a lot of great feedback and um, talked to a lot of great folks. Awesome, awesome. Well, Michael, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for really, having me, yes. Really appreciate it. Awesome. And thank you all for watching. Again, we're coming to you from the, exhi uh, the exhibit floor here at Stripe Sessions. And this has been another version of Stripe Developer Office Hours. So definitely recommend you try out Cursor if you haven't tried it yet. And let us know what you think. Thanks.